Hey, party people. People who love to party. It's me, Mr. Beelum, here to talk to you today about rectangles, the duchess of shapes. Now, you know rectangles from way back. Everybody has had plenty of run-ins with rectangles. And that's because it's one of the most identifiable shapes from when you were a kid. And it's one of the easiest to master. What you probably don't know and have not realized up to this point is that rectangles are also parallelograms. That means they have all of the properties of parallelograms, both of their opposite sides or their opposite, their pairs of opposite sides are parallel. They've got that going for them. Both of their opposite sides are congruent. They've got that going for them. Their opposite angles are congruent. And their diagonals bisect each other. What rectangles do, rectangles change one thing and get a whole bunch of stuff for that one thing. And the one thing that they change is, is that now all of our angles are going to be equal to each other. It's a parallelogram that has all of its angles equal to each other. So this means we're still gonna have some of the same vocabulary. We're still gonna be worried about opposites and diagonals and the like. But what a rectangle has is it's got all angles are equal. So let's check out what that means. First of all, old school, if it's a parallelogram, its opposite sides are congruent. And this is something you already knew about a rectangle because it's like the first thing we teach kids about rectangles. So as I move over here, I'm like, hmm, how would I figure out all these things? Well, these two are equal to each other. Y is equal to 42. And these two have got to be equal to each other. 5X minus three is equal to 2X plus six. You may have seen this somewhere before. You end up with three X is equal to nine. X is equal to three. That means this side has got to be 12. And this side also has to be 12. So what's special about that? Well, not a whole lot exactly, but we do have an area formula for rectangles. Oh yeah, and the area is equal to the base times the height or the bottom times the height. You may have seen this as length times width. So I can easily calculate the area of this by multiplying 42 by 12. And 42 times 12 is 504 units squared. Voila. So that's just a little bit extra for you because otherwise you already knew this. Now, what is going on down here? Boop, boop, boop. All of our angles are equal to each other. What does that mean? Well, in a quadrilateral, if they're all equal, they all have to be 90 degrees, every single one of them. Because in any quadrilateral, the sum of your angles is 360 degrees. Unlike a triangle that adds to make 180, quadrilaterals add to make 360. So as you move here, you may be thinking to yourself, hmm, in order to do this problem, I should take my 6x plus 1 and set it equal to my y plus 15. Guys, that wouldn't get us anywhere. You've got two different variables. Poop time. Instead, rely on the fact that we know that since these are equal, they've got to be 90 degrees. 6x plus 1 is equal to 90. And y plus 15 is equal to 90. Up here, you'd subtract one from both sides. You'd have 6x is equal to 89. And you may end up crying yourself to sleep because after you divide by six, x equals 89 over six. Yikes. I know what you're thinking. Mr. Bill, plug it back in and see what the angle is. I already know what the angle is. It's 90. That's where we started. Over on this side, we're just going to minus 15 from both sides. And we end up with, let's see, 8, 5, y is equal to 75. Voila, rectangled. Now that's the new thing about rectangles. It's a parallelogram, all of their angles are equal. It has all the rest of the properties of a parallelogram, its angles are equal. The bonus that we get for that is rather strange and it has to do with the diagonals. Our diagonals not only bisect each other. Remember in a parallelogram, your diagonals cut each other in half, but they're the same length now that we've got all those angles to be equal. So each one of these pieces is the same 
and these big pieces are the same as each other too. So as I move over here with my little pieces, I've got 4B is equal to 23. Well, if I want to find B, I just set them equal to each other, just like I said. Divide by 4, divide by 4. B is equal to 23 over 4. Ooh, look at that fraction. Oh, well, fractions happen. But what about these two guys? Well, they should be exactly the same thing. So we can set them equal to each other. We could say A plus 17 has to equal 3A plus 5. Or we could just say that they're going to equal 23 because they all have to be the same in a rectangle. So I'm going to do it the easy way. A plus 17 is equal to 23. Um, you minus 17 from both sides. You get A is equal to 6. Now, is that true? Did I just lie to you? Did I just make this problem that completely doesn't work? Let's find out. Put that 6 back up in here. 3 times 6 plus 5. It's going to be 18 plus 5, which is, oh, my God, it's 23, just like I told you. There it is, folks. Rectangles, the duchess of shapes, has all of the things that parallelograms have going for them. And now the added bonus of all the angles being equal, or if you prefer, all of the angles being 90 degrees. There you go. Hey, stuff ain't changed. Real crazy. Stay safe out there. I guess I said that backwards. <laughs>